He needs three consecutive strikes to win it all. I need you now more than ever. I need you. So, welcome. And I know, it has been a year since Half-Life Alex came out, and I'm finally getting the chance to play this amazing game for myself, but it was just on sale for $35.99. And like a good gamer, I purchased it, and I did not watch any of the gameplay, as to not ruin my experience, but more importantly than that, before playing Alex, I had not played the other Half-Life games, except only the beginning of Half-Life 1 and the whole of the first Portal game. So, luckily for me, Reddit is there and I went over to post my glory that I'll be playing the games in chronological order as to play the timeline true to the story as I thought to myself, this makes sense. But I was quickly corrected with the fierceness of a caring mother that I should not and shall not play the games in that order. The community cherished my soul and only one of the best for me in my endeavors. So I built up the courage and decided that yeah, I'm gonna play all of the Half-Life games before I play Alex in order to have the best experience of my life. So I had to play Half-Life 1, 2, as well as Episode 1 and 2, as well as the Portal games. Not too bad, I don't think. So then, like the data analyst I am, I hunted down the average playtime for each game to measure the distance and time I would have to spend before I got to see the promised land of Half-Life Alex. And I found out it would take me 33 hours. I immediately decided that I would not be doing that. So I watched a YouTube video that told me the whole story in 33 minutes. <laughs> and now, Half-Life Alex. Spoilers, of course, spoilers. What do I have to say that no one else hasn't said already? Maybe, maybe a lot. Like I said before, there will be spoilers, but nothing of like the main story just levels from the game. So first off, I played this on my Quest 2 over virtual desktop paired with my Sennheiser HD 559s. Headphones that are open back, not to flex, but the audio is immaculate. The game audio in this game is immaculate. It is so good. There's been countless times where the atmospheric audio alone is making me shiver, especially in the underground levels. Is it just me, or did you find yourself actually staying quiet in the real life of fear that things in game can hear you? There's a few levels where it's you're just fighting zombies where it actually puts you in like a survival mode. Um, and this is one of the main reasons why I didn't do a let's play because I actually couldn't, I was so immersed that I couldn't consistently say words. So it would literally just be like a cinematic playthrough of the game, which there's enough of that already out there. And speaking about immersion, I would say one of the most immersive aspects of the game is the looting system, paired with the physics of the world. Hands down, one of the best looting systems in a VR game to date. Not saying other games are bad though, because games like The Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners, that game's looting system, I mean, it's good. It's just Half-Life Alex. they really took it to that next notch. So all right, enough about the technicals. This game is not only a great story, but because of the immensely long wait time that we had for this game, not only did I want to play it because I like VR, but because I just felt obligated to see and play what Valve had to offer and what everyone was praising so hard. Like after so many years, I was just like, I have to understand what was Valve working on? And yet again, Valve did deliver a next gen gaming experience. And the sad thing is not everyone will be able to play it because not everyone has VR, but with the Quest 2, I mean, more people have VR now than ever before, but you're still gonna have to have a PC to play it, which is understandable, but even at that, hey, come on. Sometimes the next gen in gaming, the next step, you have to go to that next step. 
which I find this an interesting position that Valve would put themselves in as a game developer um, to be just always on the cutting edge. This is good for the consumer side because we can always have like the, the best technology. Like we know when Valve releases something, it's gonna be the top, top of the line. Um, I'm just hoping that we don't have to wait another two console generations for the next Half-Life game, hoping that it's Half-Life 3, which I almost said a spoiler, but I'm not gonna say it. Many of you that have played the game already, comment down below if you know why I just said that, right? Why I'm not saying this spoiler. But aside from all the praises of the game, there were some glitches. Although minor, they did occur a couple of times while I was playing, such as a few times ammo or ammo boxes would disappear when trying to get them. But it didn't affect my gameplay really because there's usually plenty of ammo scattered around the map, so I was fine. But it was something that happened and something that I realized slightly pulling, pulling me out of the immersion, but it was fine. So that's all I really have to say for now. Um, I'll be trying out the Bioshock mod campaign for Half-Life Alex because that looked amazing. I know I'm a little late on that by about two weeks, but I'll probably be doing a live commentary. Maybe, maybe not. But if you enjoyed today's video, like comment your thoughts down below for a shout out in the next video i would love to hear your thoughts and remember to hit that subscribe button and make it change from red to whatever color it changes to thanks for all the feedback and new subscribers things are coming together here and i really appreciate it so i'll catch you in the next one and in the meantime check out these videos here i promise they're bangers and you'll enjoy them anyways peace